Hey Pop Culture Pals, it's Cynthia and I am here today with a small haul. Um, some of you may have seen I had a huge haul up a couple of days ago and it was my best ever. It was the second day of that estate sale that I did two videos ago that had all kinds of sci-fi and fantasy things. We scored some amazing items from Supernatural and Firefly and all kinds of other good stuff. Um, unfortunately, the entire video recorded without sound. <laughs> so hopefully this one's recording with sound. So I've already listed that stuff, put it away, and no joke, already sold about three items from that listing, from that haul video. So don't even have them to show you anymore. Um, so we're just gonna call that one a loss and we're gonna move on. And like I said, it really pains me because there was some unusual stuff in there that I really wanted to talk to you about. So today I am back with a t-shirt haul. Um, I haven't actually shown you some of those in a while because I hadn't bought a bunch in a while. We've been doing different kinds of estate sales and I hadn't picked up so many. Um, this was my find of the day that I'm hoping will, uh, you know, really turn a good profit. So it's a Harley Davidson mesh motorcycle jacket. It's got some really cool detailing like this here. And then the, and the collar's really nice. And the back, oh, it weighs a ton and the back has the big Harley um, logo on the back now here's the thing about this Harley Davidson as popular as Harley Davidson is the stuff doesn't sell as well as it used to for me and I know for some other people so don't automatically grab everything Harley Davidson it doesn't always go jackets though is a whole nother story I can't even find anything wrong with this I'm amazed somebody turned this in to Goodwill I did pay $10 for it, which is more than I would normally spend on an item at Goodwill, but I don't think I'm gonna have any trouble flipping this for minimally $50, $60 and possibly over a hundred. I will let you know, this was definitely my find of the day. Oh my God. So let's move that out of the way and let's have a little lesson in pop culture. So here, let me do a little, Boost, I think will help us out some. Get it boost enough. I know I've got a funny angle going on today um, because I literally have so much stuff on my desk that I'm listing. I had to go in a different direction. So um, we, the estate sale that we were going to, the people in the next side, the next street over, were very smart and realized that if they were having an estate sale, um, lots of people would be coming down their road. So they decided to have a garage sale, and it was an enormous garage sale. Um, once again, had a lot of fun stuff that we like, lots and lots of clothes, and this shirt was hanging up. Now, when a shirt is hanging, because they had all the other stuff spread out on a blanket on the ground, and a lot of it came from our local Goodwill, which is really funny because we recognize the tags. But this was hanging up, and I always assume when it's hanging up, they want more money for it. Now, the average person might not recognize this. They might think it's a real work shirt, but it's not Dunder Mifflin is the company in the TV show, The Office, and you also get that here, NBC Experience Store tag. So it is created to look like a work shirt from the show, um, but clearly a collectible. I'd buy almost anything with the NBC Experience label. It doesn't mean it sells. One of the things we're gonna talk about today is the fact that pop culture doesn't always, and popular doesn't always mean valuable in resale. So, the office shirts in general, t-shirts, I have a few of them, they move slow. The office isn't as hot as it used to be. Some people still like it, you know, they still really relate to it and will buy the shirt. This, however, is really unusual because it's sort of a replica of something you might see on the show because it is a work shirt. This one's got a little bit more value. Some of these have sold recently in the $20, $30 range, some for less, I think people who didn't know what they were selling. Um, so I'm thinking we should be able to get $30 for this. Now, I asked the guy how much because it was hanging up. All the other clothes on the ground were a dollar, and he said a dollar. <laughs> so I'm not sure why he had it hanging up separately, but I'm glad he did because I may never have seen it if he hadn't. Uh, that stay, same estate sale, we found this shirt, which I just adore. So this is a little different, and maybe somebody, the Disney fan, can clue me in. The tag on this is Disney Shopping. So not Disney Store, 
um, perhaps Disney shopping, like maybe this was made for a home shopping network and this was Disney. I mean, it's actual Disney. It's got Disney buttons and all of that. Um, so I don't know. I don't understand this label. If somebody knows, please tell me. Lovely Hawaiian shirt. It's a small. I do wish it was a bigger size, but hey, bigger scamp choosers. It's got Mickey and Minnie, uh, Hula Minnie, uh, Aloha Mickey, it says over here. And it's that faded, intentionally faded pale blue that you get on like the sun bleached shirts, like the rain spooners. If you don't know, I'm telling you now, you see any shirt that says rain spooner up here, buy it. If this was the rain spooner Disney, which I thought for a moment when I saw it because he does the Hawaiian shirts, oh gosh, that would have been a real score. But even this, um, there are quite a few of them. Well, I say quite a few. There's a handful of them up on eBay right now and a few that have sold. And they're kind of all over the board, no less than $15 or so, and I might be able to get 20 or 30. The small size might hurt me a little bit because I think that um, this would do better in a larger size. But again, I paid a dollar for this. It looks like it's never been worn. Gorgeous shirt, gorgeous shirt. This is an example of uh, popular doesn't necessarily mean valuable. So this came from that same state sale. Um, this I recognized right away when I saw it without seeing the tag. This is The Hangover. You might recognize this baby. It's the movie The Hangover. And pretty much every joke from the movie is on this shirt. Um, that's kind of the only reason I bought it. The Hangover shirts, there are a ton of them on eBay and they don't sell that well. Most of the time you're going to see these, this image here, the beard. This one was really unusual. So I grabbed it and mainly I grabbed it because it was new with tags. Officially licensed the movie Hangover shirt. Uh, came from Ripple Junction, Junction, which I'm surprised. Um, it sold for $25 originally, which is just amazing that anybody paid $25 for the shirt originally. Um, so I grabbed it for those two reasons. It's unusual and it was new with tags. Otherwise I would have left it behind even for a dollar because so there are dealers, I have to find a better word for that. There are wholesalers that are selling this, selling hangover shirts by whatever size you need, whatever color you need, whatever. There's just so many of them up and brand new and cheap brand new, like under $10 or under $14, that getting anybody to pop on a used one in a specific size is tricky. But like I said, with the tags, I thought I'd take a chance for a dollar. All right, next up is this one. Um, so now we're into the ones, I haven't looked all these up yet, but this one caught my eye because of two things. This is embroidered here, and this little guy here looked kind of robot-y. So I looked up Topcart and Comer, and apparently what this is, is a company that makes parts for high-end uh, go-kart racing cars. So that being the case, I saw that the cars or car parts or other, th I don't know, I saw stuff under this Comer name selling for $300 on eBay. Not clothing, but you know, items or whatever it is they make. So, and this is also a really nice high-end looking tag. Um, so I thought I'd try it. This is, you know, again, embroidered on here is quite high-end. I don't think it says anything. Oh, it says the same thing on the back. Top cart comment. Um, I paid Goodwill price, which my Goodwill is now $2.99 for t-shirts. And I don't know, this was, a, this was my wild card of the week. I'm thinking I should easily get $14 for it, but it might get a lot more. Next is Harry Potter. Um, now this, let me come back a little bit more so you can see the whole thing. <clears throat> I do pick up, if they're cheap enough, pretty much any Harry Potter shirt I see. They're not always fast sellers for the very reason I already described. There's so many of them on eBay that it's tough. Especially if it's just a generic picture of Harry Potter himself because Anybody searching Harry Potter will get every shirt. Yeah, and so this way, um, if it's a particular character, at least you can narrow down what you're getting. Excuse my hearing my husband talking in the background of the video. 
So I grabbed this one specifically yeah. because it was a Universal Orlando Resort special edition from a celebration of Harry Potter. And I didn't even realize it's still new with tags. What's really crazy is that this was only $22. Um, now, granted, yeah. 2014, but that hangover shirt was 25. This is a park shirt, and it was only 22. Again, I'm assuming from the year. So um, that's why I grabbed this one, especially I was excited about this one. I love anything universal, and um, I think this is going to do really well. I have not looked it up, but uh, I think it's going to do well. This is, let me adjust myself here. Uh, so this is a Charlie Brown Peanuts We Run the Streets official Peanuts Crew shirt from, it's a special, I thought it was a special company. It does say Peanuts here, but I thought the art was something special. Um, I picked this up mainly again because it was new with tags. It was originally only $13, which I again find really hard to believe from Rue 21. I don't know what that is. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's too cheap. Now what I cannot figure out, feel free to tell me if you know, this spotting pattern I thought was part of the design I'm feeling like now it is not part of the design, that something got laid over it or something, but I don't think it's going to matter. I think it makes the shirt, the shirt look a little more street, if you will, and I think it's still going to do pretty well. Um, I looked them up. They do sell in the $14 to $20 range, so new with tags. I should not have trouble recouping my $3 that I spent on it. This... Um, let me go back a sec. Peanuts is another one of those. It used to sell better than it does for me. Um, and it's real hit and miss. So you, I wouldn't go crazy and I wouldn't overspend. But mostly you can move Peanuts items. But um, yeah, not always. So it's a little tricky. This is a Tea Fury shirt. And I'm going to have to do a little research online to get the name of it. Tea Fury shirts always have a name. What Tea Fury is, if you're not familiar, is a shirt company that has generally mashup shirts that combined two famous pop culture icons into one shirt. Now, clearly we're looking kind of Walking Dead here or Night of the Living Dead, but I do not recognize the characters. Um, they're clearly from another movie, I'm guessing, or television show. Um, if you know off the top of your head, please do leave it in the comments for me. I'd appreciate <laughs> saving me the work looking it up if you don't mind. Um, I fell in love with the art. Again, I don't even know what it is, but I thought the art was really cool. T Fury shirts for me are hit and miss. There's ones that will flip for $20, $25. They usually are limited editions. Often they're limited editions, so they aren't available any longer. If somebody wants them, they can only get them on eBay, but not always. They do keep a backlog of some more popular um, titles, and uh, print them. I think they print them on demand. So um, I don't know what this one is. Sometimes, I think the other company, not T Fury, I can't remember, the other company has the name. Sometimes they'll have the name of the shirt imprinted on it, but this one doesn't. So pretty cool. I'm going to shoot for the $20 range um, once I figure out exactly what it is. It's also a really nice, uh, it's 2XL, which is even better for a horror shirt. Um, after that, I got, I'm going to pull this one out. I've got two Xbox shirts here. Let me come down a step. Whoa, hang on camera. Watch yourself for a minute and let me get a little bit lower. Sorry, watch my hand. I know, very professional today. Sorry. Um, this one is a Xbox. It says um, Easy Expert Zone and Easy E3. So E3 is a convention for uh, video game announcements of like what's coming out new in video games. So I'm assuming this was a shirt that a volunteer wore to man the Xbox booth. It's kind of cool. It's green. It's a light shirt. Uh, it obviously has been worn and washed quite a few times. You can tell the tag is completely worn out. Um, I don't know. Again, this is a hit and miss. I probably should have no trouble getting 10 to 12 for sure, 14, 15, I'm thinking 
above that. Um, maybe more because it is from a convention and they might not be able to get it. Um, same for this one. This is Xbox Live shirt. This one feels brand new, like it's never been worn. The back has the larger Xbox Live logo. Um, the fact that this shirt feels really good and it's an XL, I'm thinking, again, I should have no trouble getting 14 to 20 out of this one. 14 for sure. And let me just scoot a few things out of the way here. All right, last two shirts. Let's save this weird one for la real last. Um, so I picked this up. Hmm. I picked this one up um, at the Goodwill too, I guess. Um, Starbucks coffee and tea and spices. Unusual old logo. And then the back or the inside? I think it's the back. Yeah. The back says the first Starbucks store. So I'm assuming this is a souvenir t-shirt that if you go to Seattle and you visit the very first Starbucks store that you can buy. It's in pretty good shape. It's a large, but it's kind of a snug, large. Um, I thought it was fun. You know, Starbucks is really hot. I don't know. I didn't look it up. I didn't bother because I thought it's Starbucks and it's from the first Starbucks store. So again, I'm thinking easily a $14 tea. This one is a real wild card. I can get it here where you can see it that I will have to look up. So it is a combination of Boris Karloff's Frankenstein and Frankenberry, the cereal that uh, if you're my age, you grew up with. Um, it looks like an artwork tea by Rob somebody maybe, uh, Rob man, Rob man, hard to read that. And I think it has no tag, which is gonna make it trickier. Um, but I adore, again, it's a super mashup tea. I like anything horror movie. I'm going to look really quick while you're on with me. Very monster shirt. There are lots of regular Frankenberry shirts from this cereal, but I do not see this one. Nope. So that could be a good sign. It could mean it's a really valuable rare tea. I'm gonna have to do my homework a little bit and find out who this is, this um, the artist's name here, um, and look that up. So that's that. Um, real quick, since we're looking, I also picked these up. I don't usually pick up box sets at the Goodwill because they're very expensive, but they gave these to me for regular $2.99 DVD price. It's a set of Perry Mason movies. They had volume one and volume two. Um, I did mess myself up a little. It was a little bit of a fail because when I looked it up, I saw Perry Mason selling a lot, for the movie collection selling for $30. I did not realize that it was the complete series, not the volume one series. So the volume one and the volume two that I got, probably I might be lucky if I got 30 for each because somebody can spend 30 to get the entire series. So I should make my money back on them, but it's not going to be the good flip that I was really hoping it was going to be. Um, I think I'm going to stop there. I did want to tell you I bought, I did go back to that estate sale and buy a ton of Playmobil, a ton, a ton, a ton. And I've been spending an hour practically every night just going through, sorting it all, matching pieces up, and trying to create um, sets as close to the original sets as possible. Uh, the first three sets I listed were up for less than 24 hours when they sold. They sold for good prices. They didn't sell for fantastic prices. I took good deals on them because I wanted to get my money back out of it, and I already have. So less than 24 hours after I bought the Playmobil, I've already paid back in, paid myself as it were, everything I put into them. So I'm at profit going forward. So that's what I've got for you right now. I hope that you were able to actually hear this video and I hope you learned something or at least got enjoyed the great shirts I picked up this week. If you went thrifting this weekend, I'd love to hear about your finds and your favorite pop culture items, icons. Do you love Frankenstein? Did you eat Frankenberry cereal? Tell me about it in the comments below and I'll see you next time.